All right, good morning, BBT. This is Peter coming to you live from my offices here in, well, I'm in Canada. And uh, we're bringing you the best news from Wall Street to Canary Wharf to Hong Kong and back again. So, welcome to the show. And if you know the movie reference I was just trying to imitate, put it in the comments. <laughs> you may notice I'm running solo today. Carlos had a family emergency, Norm is still on vacation, and I have technology that only allows me to be me. So, you're stuck with me for the morning, and hopefully we can make it a good one. I'm uh, pretty pumped, as I always am, as you can see. Priscilla, you win bonus points. 100 bonus points to Priscilla. Good morning, Vietnam, yes. And uh, rest in peace. <laughs> Poor... Poor fellow. Anyways, um, so we've got some news this morning. We got some things that are happening. Not a lot in the markets. It's a quiet Friday, but Fridays start to get quieter as we head into the summer months. Um, that should be our expectation, which means that we got to be even more careful with whatever stocks we choose to trade and the trades that we choose to execute on. So, um, oh, what's happening here? Oh, they're throwing a little bit of a promo logo on my screen. I didn't even know this was happening. Okay. You can tell the technology I'm using to broadcast. Um, all right. So let's take a look at the SPY. Uh, you know, we have had some interesting days. In fact, uh, the last couple of days I've found have followed an interesting pattern where, you know, we have chop in the morning with a, a, then a move in, in both directions, a move up, a move down, then a little bit of patience and you can get a move back up into the close, or at least we did yesterday. And I think we're going to get something like that again today. Now, the difference today compared to the last two days is we don't have any more market testimony happening by Powell. So that should eliminate some of the morning chop. And if I check the uh, economic calendar, let me just uh, bring over our trading terminal. Uh, which uh, you can get access to as well. It's completely free, tradingterminal.com. We provide that to you. Um, and if I check the, uh, well, let's check the calendar for today. I'll start with the economic calendar. We don't have a lot going on. There's some uh, inflation information coming out of Michigan, Chicago. Uh, we have um, uh, new home sales coming out. None of that ha tends to have a big impact on the market. So I don't expect uh, much influence from that. Uh, on the earnings front, there are a couple that I'll be watching, CCL and KMX. You notice we have here on the earnings page. I'll keep an eye on those. In fact, we'll talk about KMX in a second. CCL's earnings don't come out till about like 9.15, which I find odd timing. But um, So we really won't have any information, but it might be worth watching. Whatever they announce, that could create some price action for it. All the rest are you know, sort of secondary offerings that I don't typically watch. Right, this BZ uh, C San, C San, if I could say it. Uh, anyways, all these other ones here, CMCM. Every once in a while, I know we've looked at. I I'm not going to keep much of an eye on it. Um, one note for IPOs: we'll do this right up front because I watch all the IPOs, and I usually announce them to the room. Today, there's two that I'll be watching: BIAF. Uh, Bioaffinity Tech, and then this MOB, which was supposed to have been released yesterday, but didn't come out. This has been typical of IPOs over the last uh, couple of months, I would say, where they've often delayed their release. Uh, they don't always come out to the schedule that they're initial, initially anticipating for whatever reason, right? I mean, we can understand in a down market, you probably don't want to be releasing your company. So sometimes they make, you know, last minute decision to hold it. In other cases, it's really just delays in financing, uh, in the, the pre-offering closures and all the stuff that happens out there. So who's, we'll see if MOB opens. But the one that is most interest is one we were talking about yesterday. So GGPI is a SPAC, which is a special purpose acquisition company, which really is just a pot of money that is used to invest in other companies. The, the SPAC GGPI had been investing in Polestar and they announced recently that they finally completed a final deal with Polestar and were going to some unique funding mechanism. And uh, they released this morning PSNY. And PSNY is specifically a 
Polestar uh, company offering. It came out of the SPAC, but it's independent ticker. It seems to have started trading already. Um, in fact, let me just, let's move to that screen here quickly. And uh, we can see that uh, there's been some pre-market action on PSNY. Um, you know, we, we don't even have a daily chart here. 680,000 shares traded already. So this might be something good to watch. You know, I'm not even going to be able to set levels. We got nothing, right? This is its first day in offering, and it's actually rare that it opens pre-market like this. So I don't know what to expect of this. Very, very different approach to, um, uh, you know, an IPO and an offering. So um, we'll see what happens here. But I think PSNI, PSNY, sorry, will be worth watching. And you may notice I already have it on my list here. In fact, you know what? I'm noticing my list may not be big enough for you guys to see. Let me increase the font even more. There you go. Now you can see them. Here we go. So What's happening? Okay, so so that's one that we will keep an eye on. Um, so let's uh, let's get to our gappers list. That hopefully you can read. You can see it down in the bottom left of my screen, right right below me here. Actually, over over there. Yeah, you can see that. Um, I, I will mention I, I've got my ode to Carlos up here, who I said some family emergency he couldn't be with us, but I stole his Twitter picture. Thought I'd put that up there. So, um, and uh, we'll get going here on uh, taking a look at what's moving in the markets today. Um, I, I said I will start with KMX because why can't I get my thing to switch? Sorry, guys. Oh, this is not good news when your system starts acting weird. All right, KMX. Um, had earnings earlier this morning. It's an interesting scenario. I don't know if you recall, about a month ago, they announced that they were cutting jobs. I can't remember, a couple thousand jobs that they were cutting uh, because of the you know economic conditions. Uh, they are uh, car sales, online car sales. Um, so they made the job cuts, reduced their numbers and their forecast. Uh, they just had their quarterly earnings and actually beat their numbers. And yet the stock, uh, it was sort of gapping down in the early pre-market. I notice it's just barely up uh, right now. So, you know, it's a, it's a weird scenario where they, um, you know, they have sort of reduced numbers, but they, hit, they did what they said they were going to do, but the market's not really happy with what they said they could accomplish. So most of their... Um, Beat was because of higher car prices, so they're getting a higher rate per car, which has increased their profits uh, and their revenues. So, um, you know, so that's sort of a good news, bad news story. You can see that KMX has been, uh, you know, all through 2022 has sort of been on the decline. So we may see a bump for this. You know, I wouldn't be surprised, in fact, to see if there's some interest. This thing could move up over $95 or even maybe even up towards 100 it is again it's a friday we may not get that much volume but we'll see um so there's a couple of car offerings that we'll keep an eye on ccl is the other one i'll mention because it's also not on our list well, actually it is it's gapping up right now and it is up over two percent it wasn't uh, earlier when i looked um i don't have much to say on them right yet because like i mentioned their earnings are not until quarter after nine so um, let's uh, see what is on our gappers list. And right at the top, I see Zen. Being a Canadian, I will say Z-E-N. And uh, it has, uh, well, wow, just had a big drop here. $10 drop in the last, like, two minutes. Um, however, but it's gapping up by 30%. So you have to bear with me because I've got to do my own market research here and figure out what's going on. Uh, so this is Zendesk. Um, and, uh, oh, there's, there's rumors of a buyout. All right. So that makes sense. So we got buyout rumors here that, um, with takeover talks. Okay. So that makes Zen interesting. We're certainly seeing the volume. Look at this 2.6 million shares and climbing. Um, and, uh, I don't know if there was something even more recent than, uh, than that on it. Cause let me bring back my trading terminal, which gives me all the news I need to know. Um, we'll take a look at Zendesk here on the trading terminal, see what the latest news is, but yeah, it's, um, 
just the, the buyout deal information, but somebody knows something is look at that and that $10 drop is quite something. So definitely going to keep that on my list to keep an eye on. All right. Next on my offerings. Oh, what a surprise, right? We have some EV companies and sorry, I got a crane. I got too many screens here. I got to look way over there for my, uh, my watch list. Uh, the gappers list. Okay. L I and XPEV. LI, you know, I haven't actually traded it. <laughs> I'm a pretty boring trader. You know, I, I didn't sort of talk about yesterday's trades because Carlos went over that, but let me just flip there quickly. Um, I have traded basically just Apple two days in a row. And I'll admit, for me, that's sort of the default position. Apple and AMD are where I go when I'm not seeing anything I love in the market because I know how they trade. I'm comfortable with them. They have low spreads, predictable movement. I feel that I can take those trades at almost any time, you know, whether there's news or not. Um, and this market condition, by the way, makes AMD and Apple and other like offerings good to trade because when the SPY is not gapping significantly, like today, we're so far we're gapping up, but less than 1%. So like I mentioned, we get a choppy open. Uh, I just wait that out and then wait for a good trade opportunity. When, when the market does gap significantly at the open, up or down, I find that's when AMD and, and the SPY don't give me the type the trading signals and patterns that, that are good, but I can default to them on days like this. So I actually love days where we get sort of low gapper days with some things that are moving that I can watch and then my defaults I can fall back to. So anyway, so back to the things that are moving. LI is up another 4.4%. Yesterday we were watching it. I actually had a very big regret trade moment on LI. And I should see if I can go back. So this was looking to break $40 yesterday. And right here, uh, right before 11 a.m., we were watching it in the Bearable Traders chat room. And it was sitting with an iceberg order right at 40 and it could not break it. And I was dying to go short on this thing because I was convinced that if that iceberg held, I could put a stop just above 40 because if it popped up, it was likely to pop up, you know, initially 10 cents and then go 20, 30, 40 cents above it. So I was going to put a stop just like 5 cents above 40 uh, with the chance for a big pullback. And I hesitated because it had been up so many days in a row. Look at the daily here. Like, I mean, it's been going up for over a month now. And I just couldn't make myself do it. And I really regretted it because we got a great move back. I could have got at least a full dollar on what would have been a five cent risk. Um, would have been a great trade. But coulda, shoulda, woulda, right? You can't go living off of that because that doesn't put money into the account. But um, I had the trade idea. I just failed to execute. But LI is definitely something to watch today. Uh, let me check up on that and see is there any news. By the way, for all of you that are following on YouTube and our members in the chat room, I'll do my best to keep an eye on everything. But if you've got feedback that you can give me or news to help me out, I would hugely appreciate that because I said I'm my own research department today. So uh, you might be able to accelerate things if you know some stuff that's going on. So uh, LI had uh, 300,000 orders in three days for its new SUV. So, okay. So look, the good news continues for LI. It is absolutely staying on the list. XPEV is the next, also up exactly 4.4%. No coincidence there, I don't think. Same volume of shares as LI. So, um, you know, it, it seems to be caught in the, sort of in the in the riptide, right? It's just, oh no, and I lost my, uh, my watch list. Hold on a sec. Um, you can see part of my desktop. Peekaboo. Um, there we go. We're back. Um, so yeah, it seems to be caught in the riptide. XPEV is just following along. And, and we see that a lot. Like another one we could look at is NEO. Uh, I don't see NEO on the gappers, surprisingly, this morning. But it always has big volume. It's only up 1.4%. So it didn't make the 2% uh, minimum limit to, to meet our gappers list so far. But it, you know, 1.5 million shares traded. It's another one that uh, certainly can keep an eye on. So I'm going to leave all three here because we, we might as well just set some levels on it. All right, what else have we got? Um, a lot of stuff on here that's just got low volume. 
Uh, a lot of Chinese offerings. Now, yesterday, the big news out of China was that the government said they are going to hit their economic numbers overall, which generally people interpreted to say that the Chinese companies were going to get a little more freedom to operate their businesses without you know, government restrictions if the government wanted to continue to spur that economic growth, uh, especially with their... I'll say pseudo private sector companies, anyways, with with these organizations, um, and uh, Baba, uh, uh, Billy, um, you know, we got a bunch of them that we we watch. PD, Pin Duo Duo, PDD. Um, you can see them on the list here that that we're moving. So Baba is usually the one we default to. It gets the good volume, a million shares traded so far this morning. Pre market doesn't look fantastic. But it might be worth setting some levels on that and keeping an eye on um, on what's uh, what's happening. Yeah, Dan, I see you're saying I, I we've got a little bit of delay. It looks like on YouTube, I I it's back. <laughs> so, um, all right. So I'm not going to go through the rest. Is oh one that maybe we can look at because I sort of bounced off of it yesterday. Um, Robinhood. Robinhood is not doing much pre-market. I see it just barely made the bottom of our gap up list here. Over 2% gap up today, just over 100,000 shares. But yesterday it did have some decent price action, especially midday, right around noon, when it, it dropped and dropped hard. And that was your best move of the day. Now, you got to keep in mind the range of this, right? Like, uh, I, I don't mind trading stocks this price as long as you can get a good risk to reward, which means you'd have to take a 10 cent risk or so, which you could have, right? The, the, the gap between $8 and where the high of day was yesterday was, was less than 10 cents. You could have taken a 10 cent risk and ended up getting a 40 cent move out of this. Um, but, you know, it's, it, it's, it's one of those, you know, my better risk to reward was, for instance, on... Uh, like LI yesterday where I was talking where I you know basically got a 20 to 1. Uh, this would have been at best a 4 to 1 by my reckoning and by the way I trade. But it was an interesting offering and Hood may move again today. I'm surprised, I, you know, we haven't sort of heard any corporate news about buyouts uh, on this. But um, uh, maybe what we'll do is I'll, I'll set some daily levels if I don't have significant other stuff to put on the list. Let's look at what's gapping down. Uh, PEV is gapping down. Not a lot of volume, only 200,000 shares on the downside. Phoenix Motors, what the heck? Phoenix, Phoenix Motor Inc. I haven't even heard of these guys. Again, let me go to my trading terminal and uh, see what they're doing. PEV, it's even listed here. PEV, hmm, I don't even have them. Must be a new offering. Let's see. Yeah, they've only been out for a few days. Um, I don't have much going on with PEV. If anybody has any news to know what's happening, it's, see, it's not listed on any of my uh, any of my um, trackers. So I'm not sure what to to do with that. I don't know what the news might be. Don't like the price action so far. Like I said, 200,000 shares, but. Uh, uh, so maybe we won't watch that. The other one that is on here is Revlon, R-E-V. Now, Revlon declared bankruptcy. Well, they said that they were going to go into bankruptcy about two weeks ago. And uh, you can see about two weeks ago on the daily chart, this is when they, they had a big drop. Uh, and then you bounced around and then look at the volume that came in. And this thing shot up from just about a dollar up to almost ten dollars. Um this was, you know, I keep calling it a meme stock. It really acts like a meme stock, right? When you get moves like that, excuse me. And, um, you know, it makes it hard to trade. If I look back to yesterday, you know, was there trading opportunity? Sure, but look at how, to me, this is not readable price action, right? It's pretty choppy. It was in a relatively tight range here, uh, you know, about a dollar range all day. Um, I don't like it, despite the fact that it's still getting decent volume. I mean, yesterday's volume, while significantly lower than the previous days, was 40 million shares. It just looks small because they had over you know, like 170, 180 million shares the days before. But it's not something I, I'm going to spend any time taking a look at. Last on our gap down list here is SIGA, S-I-G-A. And this was also something that had news in the last couple of days. 
Um, yesterday they were getting a boost up because the EU suggesting that they might license their monk their 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 whatever vaccines I guess for monkeypox. Um, I don't know. They're they're down a little bit today. This could just be sort of a pullback after the move up that they've had over the last number of days. Uh, um, I would think we would see a bigger move if there was some news that like maybe that deal wasn't going to be happening. So I'm not going to spend much time looking at it. Um, all right, so I've, here's my short list of things that I do want to keep an eye on. I'm not sure why I got the spy in here twice. Um, and that's good for me. The other thing I wanted to show you guys using the trading terminal, I love going here to find information. You know, if I look at the sectors for today, notice that utilities are the strongest so far today and energy and materials are the weakest. If I go to a one week view, that's pretty consistent, right? The materials and energy have been down over the last few days, probably continue to be down. Uh, Jared is great for watching the sectors and knowing what the sectors do. I don't, I don't do a lot of that, but it's good to be aware of it because then when something starts moving, at least I, you know, in the back of my mind can know, does it have sector support or not? Um, healthcare, real estate over the last week have been uh, the biggest uh, movers. Um, so, you know, that's something to keep in uh, mind too, in case we get uh, movement on it. Over the last month, well, we know that the markets have largely been down, why we're seeing almost everything sitting in the red over a one month view. So anyways, that's uh, me using the trading terminal actively. All right, let me just check quickly to see in our bearables trading room. Is there anything that you guys want to take a look at? <laughs> People are crossing Zen off their list with its uh, erratic movement. So uh, I might be early to cross it off the list, at least in my opinion. But uh, Neo, I do already have on my list uh, 194 Andy. So thanks for that. I'll, I'll keep an eye on it. How about in, uh, in YouTube? By the way... I appreciate any uh, likes you can give little old me hanging out on my own trying to keep the show running. Obviously not to the same caliber quality that Carlos delivers, but uh, we're here while he's uh, dealing with his family matters. And I'm confident that both Carlos and Norm will be back, back to normal operations Monday for you guys. So we'll, uh, something to look forward to for next week. But uh, Neo, Andy Sanderson, I've got on the list. AMD, wow, now you're speaking my language. I love AMD. I love watching it. We can set some levels. I mean, it is not doing much pre-market. It's got its normal sort of pre-market action. 380,000 shares is about normal for this time of day. I'm just going to take some levels off. One thing I will mention, because I, I look at this regularly, at 8 a.m., on a lot of the bigger offerings that have institutional uh, ownership, significant institutional ownership, you get what, uh, it's an early morning settlement period. You often get a small body, big wicked candle right at 8 a.m. You can see it on AMD, right? Biggest wick, biggest volume of the morning and biggest range. And uh, so I'm going to set, uh, I set what we like to jokingly call the tinfoil line because it's sort of like a conspiracy theory tinfoil line where I put just a, a light yellow line here to know that the top and bottom of that range because sometimes that comes into play. Recently, I haven't been watching it a lot because it doesn't come into play heavily. Let's look at Apple. That's another one I like to watch for this. But sometimes it does. You can see Apple, see again, biggest volume, biggest candle of the morning right at 8 a.m. So this happens you know, quite regularly on a lot of the offerings. I will put my markers top and bottom of that just to keep an eye on it. You notice it brackets the range of where the pre-market was. If, the, if that comes into play, then at least I'm ready for it. If it doesn't, then, then no harm, right? But it's something for me to keep an eye on. So the TFL line, Timmy, exactly. Yeah, that's, uh, again, one of my favorite... Um, one of my favorite little conspiracy lines that uh, I love to put in there. We used to, uh, joking, let's see if I still have my image. Oh, uh, here it is. We'll, we'll bring this in here. My good buddy Thor, we, we, uh, with a 10, 8 a.m. tin foil line, you can see drawn on here. I don't know, it might be a little small for you guys. Let's, uh, let's make it bigger. There you go. <laughs> and, and, of course, he's got his, his tin foil hat on. <laughs> All right. Ah, oh, Thor, I love you, buddy. Okay. Um, I'm not seeing anything else you guys want to watch. 
So we'll keep it to that. Let me go then to, we're a little early. Hey, that's rare for me. I am always running late when I do this, especially when I do it on my own because I got no one to check me, but we have relatively few things that are moving. So that's a, that's a good thing, I guess, for me that I'm moving ahead. Let's, let's go to our calendar, which I will take off of um, the, let me just expand it out here which I'll take off of our website. Um, every week, like I tell you every day, we've got a whole bunch of stuff that um, uh, happens every week. Monday is about onboarding. Tuesdays are always about strategy. Um, and next Tuesday, we're gonna have a great strategy session. I hope it's great. I'm leading it. But uh, it's going to be a strategy session focusing on trading a single stock. And it's interesting that like I was sharing with uh, my uh, boot camp members who are part of the peak capital trading boot campers um, we uh, i've been trading uh, apple in fact i pretty much had the exact same trade on apple yesterday as i had on wednesday so um you know there's a huge value in trading a single stock but you have to know the downsides i'll be talking about both of those uh in my webinar at eight o'clock next tuesday the 28th hopefully you'll join me if you're an elite member at bbt for that the week after carlos will be doing a webinar himself on uh, analysis and risk management. Wednesdays are psychology, and our Wednesday webinar next week is with Randy Howell talking about how to keep emotional control extremely important. You know, um, managing your emotions and your psychology is 80% of this game. Don't ever think it's you versus the market. That is usually a route to get you into trouble. It's you against yourself. Manage your own psychology. I promise you, you'll have better results than if you focus on trying to beat the market. You can't beat the market. In fact, your objective is not to beat the market. It's really to figure out how do I, how do I leverage the market momentum to create benefit. We as retail traders, we don't move the market and therefore you can't beat it. The best you can do is ride the tide, so to speak, right? And go with it. So if you can come to grips with that and manage it, you'll be better positioned. So Wednesdays, we focus on psychology and then Wednesday after next on July the 6th, Dr. Kenneth Reed will be back with us talking about 10 things you need to know about bear markets. That'll be a great session. Thursdays are all mentorship. Yesterday we had our mentorship sessions with John at 11. Ed actually did some talk early in, earlier in his room. We've got two chat rooms for you at Bearable Traders. We've got the regular, the full chat room, and then we got Ed's dedicated chat room that we lovingly call the jungle, where he you know trades his strategy and approach, a very different approach than what we generally trade in the main room, but one that resonates with people. And if you had a chance to watch the closing bell with Artie, um, and Andrew, they had a special guest on two days ago, and he was talking about how much Ed's approach and philosophy helped him and really made the, created a turning point in his trading so that he could get to profitability. And then last night, Thor was on. We had an amazing number of hundreds of people that were in there for his mentorship session where he's able to go in depth. He takes time out of the markets in the evening to go over your questions in depth and really sort of outline how does he look at the markets. He is probably on a percentage basis, the most successful trader in BBT. I don't know that for a fact, but um, I'm willing to put some money on that. That's probably true. Um, his, his win rate is phenomenal. His consistency is truly impressive. So um, it's really, you know, it bears, uh, it, it's worth listening to Thor when, when he sort of talks about how he approaches the market because he's got a method that absolutely works. So that's the slate of activities, all that happening next week. Today is Friday, so we don't have any scheduled activities. We don't do that on Fridays. Um, we, uh, we just focus on the markets and then we go for the weekend. We rest, relax, recharge come back for Monday morning. But we've got a market day to get through. So why don't we, uh, why don't we take a look at those things that we've got and um, set some levels. <laughs> I see Rob, you're saying Thor needs a chat room. You know what? But then Thor has to run a chat room. I'm not sure that that's something that uh, he has time to do. He's got a very busy life. And uh, you know, you need to you need to, you know, you, you need to trade to live, not live to trade. And we, we all embrace that here at Bearable Traders. And, and as much as we love the community, and I mean, heck, I, I probably spend more time here than almost anybody. Um, we acknowledge it's part of our life and we don't let it dominate. And we would never ask Thor to do something that would take away from his precious time with his family, his kids, 
um, and and his activities. So, anyways, Thor. But Thor is you know welcome to do whatever he uh, wants to. So, let's take a look at those things that uh, I've got on my list and set some levels. Like I mentioned, PSNY, the top of my list. Really don't have any levels because we're just opening up this morning. But I noticed the volume has picked up a little bit over the last 15 minutes. We're now up over a million shares traded. I honestly think this is going to be a mover. Now, interestingly to me, I would not have expected there to be a tinfoil line on PSNY. But I see that we have, again, biggest volume of the morning, wide body candle, uh, uh, sorry, small body, why the big wicks so i'm definitely going to set this tinfoil line just to see if it comes into play notice this like look how the, you know where the settlement candle previously hit that exact same level here look way back at 5 a.m and hit that level on the downside you can see an area of support all throughout the morning so you know it, it might move up and this will never be in play but if it is i want to be ready for it so look at least that's a level other than that no idea where I expect this to go i'm definitely going to be watching this Probably on a secondary list, but I'll watch it just to see what happens and where we go. KMX, uh, not doing much this morning despite earnings. Still very low, 33,000 shares. All I can say is the highs and lows of the previous two days are below the, the average current price volume. So I'll watch that. We are sort of almost moving into a gap area. We had a gap back here at the beginning of June. So I'm going to set a level at the bottom and top of this gap. And I will watch that for KMX. That's about all the level I'm going to set here on this one. CCL uh, was the next one, as I said. Um, we have uh, news that is forthcoming on CCL. Nothing yet. Remember, earnings are happening in about another 12 minutes or so. So we'll see uh, what happens when those earnings hit. Right now, the pre-market action is pretty flat. I see that I've got, see that I like gaps. You notice I already had a gap marked here. Low and high of this gap happened at the same time as the KMX gap, interestingly, uh, back here. So I've already got that marked. And then I'm going to wait to see what happens with the early price action as to whether I want to set some additional levels zen was the next one uh buyout rumors and again some pretty interesting pre-market price action we are almost at five million shares traded already so i i think this is going to be a mover i'll uh, keep an eye on it at this range well we're in a gap right now happened back look at this almost the same days here uh june the 8th and 9th in this case as opposed to the 10th but um Still, we're, we're in a gap, so I'm just going to set a level at the low end. Oops, the low end of that gap right here, just so I keep it marked at the high end. I like this level right up here around 87.30. I'm going to put a mark at 87.33 just to keep an eye on that for Zendesk. And uh, we'll see what happens with this. It could be pretty crazy, um, you know, once it, once it opens. But, you know, you, you might get some trading opportunity worth keeping an eye on. LI, again, just what a mover over the last little while. I mean, if you were swing trading this, man, you'd be ecstatic. You could have doubled your money on a swing trade here if you, uh, if you grabbed it back at the beginning of the month or late in May. But uh, right now, uh, it's, it's not doing much pre-market. And we are at a level that may be all-time high. Is it? No, not quite. Yeah, I remember talking to Carlos about this. So let me set a level up here. The all-time high on this is 47.70. So let me make sure. I'm going to make sure my level is exactly at 47.70. Um, so I don't think we're going to get that high today. That seems like a little bit of a stretch, but we'll see what happens. We're, we're basically in an area where LI has not played much. It, it was only up here for two days, essentially. Oh my goodness, excuse me. My breakfast cereal. Now I'm talking too much. It's coming back at me. Um, so we'll see what happens with LI. XPAV. XPAV has some interesting levels. You can see I've obviously set levels on this in the past. I got a ton of stuff already set. I think my level at 37.19 is still a good one. I'm going to keep that on there. Um, high and low of the previous two days, an area to keep an eye on. And I notice I've got a daily 200 moving average sweeping down into the price action at 35.73 is where this sits. So I'm going to set a level there just so if I'm not looking at a daily chart, I will still remember that there's that moving average coming in. Other than that, um, you know, just keep an eye on XPEV and see where it goes. NEO has uh, a tinfoil line on it, so I can set that up here. 
you can see on my two minute chart on the daily we're pulling up out of this consolidation it's been in now this area now there's two places of topping here 2398 which it hit right here and let me make sure i'm going to put my level right at 2398 because i really want to keep a sharp eye on that and then i like this area of consolidation right around here around 26 dollars now i don't know once again necessarily that we're going to make that big of a move i mean the, while neo has had some good movement it hasn't been huge in amplitude like the daily move has been barely sort of a dollar from high to low right so it has been moving much more than that in fact if I take a look at it, what is the ATR? And it's probably about a buck fifty or something. A dollar fifty-eight. <laughs> Good guess. Dollar fifty-eight is the ATR. So yeah, I wouldn't expect huge range on Neo, but it might give good price action you can take advantage of. Baba's the next on my list. Again, another settlement candle here. Good old tinfoil line. We'll mark that. The highs and lows, really just the highs of the previous two days, are to keep an eye on the downside. I got a daily level at 120.10 that I'm going to keep in here. And I noticed this candle, 121.05 is where this one peaks. So I'm just going to put a second level there so that I can keep an eye on that. And we'll, uh, that's probably good to the upside on Bubba. Hood, I mentioned, it's not really looking much better. Still 140,000 shares. I'm just going to kick it off my list here because I've got enough to keep an eye on. We'll go into the two then sort of uh, stalwarts that I always keep on my list. AMD, um, really been in a range the last few days. I, I actually have liked the price action. There's been trading opportunity. I just happen to have been focused on uh, Apple because it's set up a little earlier than AMD and I therefore got into that trade. But the highs and lows of the previous two days brackets this. The price action is probably going to stay in this range for today. So, you know, make your decision. That may not be of interest to you and you may want to just pull it off your list. But I don't expect, I have no reason to think there's going to be a big move on AMD. Apple, sort of the same scenario, except... It's actually been on an increase over the last few days. And if you look at the daily chart, um, you know, this week it's been increasing, well, ever since Friday of last week. So, you know, we, we've had a few days of increase. We're actually over the top of this. And uh, there's a small gap here. So 140.76, I want to set a level there, um, which is the top end of this gap I can keep an eye on. Um, a Apple, in my experience, loves the whole dollar numbers and watch the level two as to where the bid and ask volume sit. That tends to play more than the, the level ranges, I find. Um, uh, but I will still set them on my, my chart just in case, because on the low side here of this gap, I've got 142.50-ish, 53. So I'll put a level 142.52. And that way you can just keep an eye in case we get up there. Apple absolutely has the ability to move there. Uh, Apple, you know, being a slightly higher price stock, it's going to have a bigger ATR. Yeah, it's $4.80. So, you know, if I say 4 or $5 from where we're at, it absolutely can get through that range if it chooses to move there today. So that's what I've got for, um, uh, for the stocks that I'm watching and the levels that we're setting. Let me flip right back to YouTube, see what we've got going on. Anybody have anything else that they're looking at? I see a lot of people talking about some of the same stuff we were just talking about. And, and I'm creating conversation with the tinfoil line. So let conspiracy theories abound. Um, but anyways, uh, so I think for my primary list, I'm going to be watching AMD and Apple. I'm going to put LI on my primary as well. On a secondary, I'm going to be watching PSNY. You know, it has no proof that it's going to move, but I just think the EV sector has been so um so active recently that this may get some attention i mean we're already seeing again 1.1 million shares although the volume's dropping off a little as we head to, towards the market open i still think we're going to see some movement and a ccl will be on my secondary list for today i mentioned quickly the ipos that i was watching so the ipos that i'm keeping an eye on for today are mob which was supposed to have opened yesterday and did not and biaf so again no guarantee that either one of those will open today but if they do i want to be ready for them um and um i will uh uh you know sort of let everybody in our chat room know if and when uh they open so let's see what our moderators are watching. I'm a little early on this, but 
I guess I just have, you know me, I'm just talking away, going early. Let me show you our chat room. You can see what it looks like. Here we go. And um, we, we only have uh, Dima so far with her list. She's also watching LI, Baba, Amazon in her case. Let's take a look at Amazon quickly and Apple. And then Jared is watching LI. Oh, he's looking for a parabolic short. So that'll be interesting. You know, <laughs> the interesting, the key thing on watching for a parabolic short, I mean, it's been moving up so much. It's reasonable. You just can't jump the gun on this or you can get hurt, right? And you don't want to get hurt on this because it's been moving up. You could get caught in a, in a 50 cent, $1, $2 push up on LI as if it continues to, to gain movement. Especially remember, there was some news, right? Big adoption of their new SUV with 300,000 orders in the last few days. It, it could move up. So, you know, set your plan. Just make sure you understand the signals you're looking for and don't jump until you see them, right? Don't anticipate the move. React. Um, and then Jared's also going to be watching the energy stocks, specifically looking for a long and an oversold bounce on XLE. And, ah, look at this. He's also wanting to play with PSNY. So I would agree with that. So that makes sense. We'll come back to that as more moderators put their list in there for this lovely Friday. Whew. And I'll take a quick breath. And I don't have my water. Darn it. Can't even wet my whistle. Okay. Any, la any other things that you guys want to uh, watch? Let me, let me know. We will put it in here. <laughs> Rage TV, is this another bull trap rally? You know, you've, you've got to always be aware of that. Um, when we've got big down markets, I mean, and, and let's just, let's go to a weekly chart here on uh, the SPY. It's obvious the SPY or the Qs. Right, if we want to look at that, I should retie this here. Hold, sorry. Um, or the cues, if you want to uh, look at them, um, have been obviously down ever since the you know the, the start of the calendar year, um, which means that you know we generally are anticipating the market to move down. That being said, the biggest rallies and up days happen within bear markets and just look at where the white candles occur you get some days that aren't big but then you get a couple of these bigger white candles where you can get these big moves up so always be ready for a, a big reversal but know it also may not be sustainable notice these reversals pulled up you had one or two days of sort of slowing motion oh sorry <laughs> of uh, slowing motion and then we dropped again so going back to the daily chart you can sort of see how you know we get these pops up right Hap sustains itself for a few days it slows and then we when we start dropping again i honestly think this is going to be another one of those trends but i don't know right i mean i, I could be wrong this could be the bottom and we're about to reverse i just don't see economic signs broadly that this is over yet um, we generally are seeing um, you know corporate news that they're still concerned we're not starting to see growth um, and of course, as we know, interest rates and inflation are continuing relatively unabated despite the attempts the Fed has made to control it. So um, I think that we're going to be continuing. So anticipate that the moves that you're seeing are probably a short term, short term rally and then it will reverse. That being said, right, we're day traders, or at least I assume you are if you're here, or even if you're a swing trader, like I just showed you, like remember what the chart looks like. You can go up for two, three, five days even in this with a single day that's very big in terms of range. Um, uh, and, and, you know, and, and that could blow your mind in terms of the approach. So it doesn't make sense to hold a short through that if you're trying to uh, take advantage over the short term. Because, you know, three days after you went short and it's still going up, you know, you could put yourself in a huge loss position and a problem. So just be, be ready and anticipate the move. Don't be afraid to get out of a position, sit and wait strategically uh, until you have the opportunity to get back in when it makes more sense. A couple more of our moderators have their list in to bring it back here. I see that, uh, well, at least Susan is. Susan's the only new one with Baba, Neo, and Meta. And on our secondary list is LI and SPY. So let's take a look at those two. Maybe the last thing I'll do this morning because Amazon was on a list. Let's take a look at what Amazon's doing. Average volume, 680,000 shares for Amazon so far this morning. 
not you know not doing a whole lot moving sideways right now it's actually been a pretty good trader so I, I can understand why people would be watching it nothing wrong with that um, it's been uh, you know moving fairly well I personally haven't found any great trades on it but um, you know I, I can see why you might want to keep it on your list and then meta is another interesting one they actually had some great price action earlier this week I think it was on Tuesday yeah Tuesday when they had just a big down day and uh, that gave a good opportunity this morning we're just over half a million shares it's up 1.4 percent price action generally sideways sort of the same scenario right could be a good mover no particular indication it's going to move today but both of those go in the same bucket as you know the ones i like to watch which is apple and amd and nvidia and all those that you can generally rely on to give you some price action and movement all right, last thing, I'll just end the morning with Megan, XPEV, DocuInspire on her list. And um, that's it for this morning. So good luck in whatever you've chosen to put on your list. As Carlos would say if he was here, trade smart. You do not want to go into the weekend regretting having taken poorly managed and, and, uh, and badly thought out trades. Trade to your strategy. You know, if you don't see the setup, don't take it. And you can at least have confidence that you've traded maturely, win or lose. I hope you all have a fantastic day and you trade well and uh, have a great weekend. And we'll see you back here Monday morning, unless you're in the room, which I'll see you this afternoon for the close. Take care, everybody. Have a great trading day.